Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Paradise Cove. So we have a sunset ocean with silhouette dolphin and a heart-shaped cove surrounded by little soft waves coming in. I'm going to go ahead and show you the brushes that I used for this. So these are the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. We have three quarter inch flat eight round, four round, and the 12th bright is a Royal and Lang Nickel brush. I used six colors for this painting, Cad Yellow Light Hue, Light Blue Permanent, Burnt Sienna, Medium Magenta, Titanium White, and Mars Black. If you don't have these exact colors, you are definitely welcome to sub whatever close color you would like to use. Same goes for the brushes. You'll also need a piece of chalk, a drawing pencil, and an optional black paint pen. I used the paint pen for the dolphin silhouette. It was easier to control than using the round brush for that, but you can definitely use a round brush for the dolphin. We're going to go ahead and get started. So our canvas is an 11 by 14 inch canvas and it is placed vertically. And we're going to go ahead and draw the horizon line. So our horizon line is where the ocean stops and meets the sky. So that is exactly in the center of this canvas. So if you're doing a 14 inch high canvas, you're going to find the center. If you're using a different size canvas, you'll just want to figure out where the exact center is. I'm measuring seven inches and I'm making little tick marks and then I'm going to do a horizontal line across. So you don't need to make your line too dark but just enough to where you can see where that center is. My palette is loaded with cad yellow light, medium magenta, light blue permanent, and titanium white. We're going to go ahead and load our three quarter inch flat wash brush into the water, kind of tap it dry. I like to leave a little bit of water on my brush. It helps kind of thin the paint a little bit so it's not super thick. Um, and we're going to mix equal parts blue and white together. So it's going to create an even lighter blue. We're going to start at the top. And this entire sky, we're using full width brush left and right strips. So just gently brushing left and right at the top. And the thing with sunsets is we don't have to blend our colors perfectly. Sometimes it looks nice if it's not blended all the way. So I'm going to continue down a little bit more blue in there. So now it's kind of like a, a super light at the top, a little bit darker towards the bottom. Notice I'm leaving this gap on the side because we're going to be painting this heart shaped cove around our sky. We don't need to be painting all the way across. If it feels more comfortable for you to paint all the way across because you're worried about having gaps, then by all means paint all the way across if that's, if that's helpful for you. But I'm gonna leave maybe an inch, inch and a half gap on the left and the right. Then I'm gonna introduce pink into my sky. Without rinsing the brush, I grabbed a little bit of that medium magenta on my brush. And I'm just gonna kind of gently blend that up into the blue area. I don't want to lose my pretty light blue sky at the top, but just a few streaks of pink in there will kind of turn purple. And it's just going to let that blue transition to that pink, but we're not trying to do a gradient where it just blends perfectly. The thing with sunsets is we don't have to blend it all the way. So if we have a streak of like dark pink up into where the blue is, that's okay that happens. Um, we're going to continue down and now I just want some more of this pure pink in there. I'm just going to blend that down. I am a little bit more than halfway down the canvas. I'm going to leave kind of a gap in the center for some yellow. I'm going to drag this pink down so it's kind of symmetrical. Let that blend out. So we had that light blue transition to kind of this pretty light purple color. And now there's some pure pink and there's still um, about two inches above the horizon line, give or take, of more space where we can fill in some yellow. I am going to rinse my brush for introducing this yellow because if I still had blue on my brush, I'm going to get green in my sky and I don't really want that to happen. So rinse the brush off. I'm loading that yellow just on the tip of the brush 
That's all you really need is just to grab that on the tip because that's mostly the part of the brush that we're using. And let's go ahead and take this yellow. So I left that gap in the center. So that gap is gonna show up kind of bright yellow. I'm gonna take that yellow, kind of blend that over the pink a little bit. Yellow and pink will make an orange color. So we're gonna get orange in our sky. We're just taking that yellow, blending it, but I don't wanna get rid of all that pink, so I'm not gonna blend it all the way. We want those kind of streaks to just kind of naturally show up. There's still a little bit of a gap at the bottom. Um, for that gap, I'm gonna grab some of this white and I'm gonna allow that bottom part that's just above the horizon line to be very bright. By using white and yellow, it's gonna make a really bright, pretty glow. And that's where my sun is gonna be and that's the brightest part of the sky. So grabbed, when I blended that up, it actually grabbed some pink on my brush. So it kind of made this peachy orange color on the bottom. That's okay. So I'm not over blending my sky. I could go back with a little bit of pink, just do a few streaks in there. It might turn orange and that's okay. Maybe I don't want to blend it all the way. So there's a few streaks of darker color that gives some more color in the sky. So we can go up here and this is optional, but I want to add a little bit more pink up into my blue area. If you like the way it looks, you don't have to do this. I'm gonna rinse, dry, grab a little bit of pink. So if you wanted to um, make that more of a lighter pink, you could mix that with white. So that'll make more of a tint of the pink so it's not super bright and bold. Um, the sky is done super bright on purpose because it's gonna allow for a really, really pretty contrast when we paint this cave around our sky. It's gonna be really bright and brilliant. That's why I didn't really dim the colors down as much. So when you're happy with the way your sky looks, it's all colorful, streaky, not perfect, and that's okay. We are gonna go ahead and start painting the ocean. Um, I'm not gonna do the sun yet because I'm gonna allow the sky to dry completely before I paint that sun. But let's go ahead, rinse that brush very, very good. Get all that pink and yellow off. And the water, we're gonna start with the light blue permanent for the water. So this is just the light blue. I'm doing pretty much the same thing that I did with the sky. Um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of white on my brush and let's go ahead and make just that part of the water that's under the horizon line a little bit lighter, letting that white kind of blend in there. I am letting it be streaky as well. So just like in the sky, we didn't blend all the way. We're not gonna be blending the water all the way either. And also leaving that little bit of a gap on the side because a lot of that cave is gonna be covering this. So I'm just gonna gently bring this down um, the blue did get a little bit lighter as I worked my way down. But we are also going to introduce pink, yellow, orange into this water because naturally the sky would be reflecting colors on our water. Let's go ahead and bring our water down to about the halfway point. So it's all blue to about halfway down the water area. Then I'm going to, without rinsing my brush, grab some of the pink. So you only need a little bit on your brush. It's kind of a darker, stronger color than that blue. So don't load too much on your brush when you introduce that color. And let's just kind of blend that up into the blue area, but not blend it all the way. You're gonna get purple streaks in there. And we'll be doing this water in layers. We have that pretty sparkling reflection down the center under the sun, and we can always layer on more colors. So right now we just wanna kind of focus on covering the white canvas with color without worrying about um, making it look too realistic like water, but um, keeping the streaks in there so it doesn't blend all the way, if that makes sense. If you feel like your paint dries super fast, you can always kind of add a little bit of water onto your brush helps with the blending. You just don't want to add too much water because it becomes an uneven amount of water to paint that's already on your canvas. Then we're going to transition to our yellow and just like in the sky we want to rinse the blue and pink off our brush when we want to do our yellow. So let's grab our yellow and let's actually make an orange on our palette. So I'm mixing yellow and pink together and I'm going to gradually just add 
more bits of pink in there. You don't want to do equal parts. You want to add more yellow than the pink. That'll give you that pretty orange color versus if it was equal amounts, it would be kind of too dark. Um, but you can change the ratio of that if you want. And I'm just going to do like an orange area. Just gently blend that up into the purpley area. Um, you may get a little bit of brown happening because you're mixing orange and purple together. Um, we're just going to try not to over blend that area so we don't want it to be too brown. Just gently blend that up. A few orange streaks kind of up in the purple area but not over blend it. We have like an orangey area and then so we can kind of envision where we are with our heart cove thing. So I will let you know that the bottom of our cave cove rocky area is three inches from the bottom of the canvas, give or take. So you want to take our ruler and just kind of see where you are and just kind of envision that bottom part of the cave because we have this blue sort of light, light blue wave that kind of dips down in between the cave area. So we want to go ahead and paint that so we can take the brush, just kind of paint like this curvy line. That's that wave that's going to be dipping down. Again, that wave starts at three inches because it dips down just behind that rock. And then it goes almost to the bottom of the canvas. There's about three quarters of an inch, about a half an inch space from the bottom of that wave. But I'm just painting that light blue. I'm not doing detail or the white sea foam or anything like that. I'm just making sure that that is solid light blue. We can blend that up a little bit into pink and orange, but we, we don't want it to turn brown or anything. I grabbed a little bit of that white and just gently kind of blending that white in there. A few streaks of white without blending it all the way. So we're going to go ahead and um, assuming this part of the sky is dry, if it's not, you'll have to dry it or come back to this step later. But we're going to paint the sun. So it's a very simple half circle shape. We're just going to be using titanium white. So I will use, this is the number four round brush and titanium white. And we're just going to paint half circle right in the center. If you don't find the exact center, if it's off center, that's fine. So just solid white half circle. You can make it larger if you want or smaller if you want. Mine is going to be about an inch and three quarters wide by about an inch high. So I find with the sun or most circles is it's better to start out small and then you can gradually get it larger if you want. So mine ended up not being quite as centered so just kind of made that a little bit more even. Next we could still use the round brush and our titanium white to start painting this reflection. So we're going to paint this vertical area of left and right horizontal strokes using the white. So I'm just barely, barely letting that brush hit the canvas, holding it very lightly. Imagine if you were sketching with a pencil, you don't want to press hard, so you want to hold this very lightly. So these strokes, are very thin and light, loose, they get a little bit wider as we go down. So we want to take this all the way down to our little wave area, left and right, and just one layer of vertical area of white reflection under our sun. For this next step, you want to make sure that your entire painting is for the most part dry, not counting the center of the sun and the reflection that we just painted. That's not going to be dry yet, but this part should be dry. So we're going to get a piece of chalk and we're going to kind of draw out our heart-shaped cove. The lovely thing about using this chalk is it will erase. So we can start out by just kind of sketching the top. So I want the top to be a heart shape. A little lopsided, so the left part of the heart is higher than the right part of the heart. 
and we want to measure about three inches from the bottom of the canvas. So that's gonna be the bottom of our cove. So a little three inch mark. And we can just take this and create a heart shape opening. You can see a lot of what we just painted is still showing through. I wanna make sure that the bottom is lined up so both the bottom edges of the rocky area are in line with each other. One's not higher than the other. I did want to go ahead and adjust this up here so I want to make sure that the right part of the heart is a little bit lower than the left part. So when you have that all drawn out and of course we can definitely adjust this as we're painting in. Um, if you look at the final results you can see that the line the edging of it is a little bit kind of wavy. I didn't draw it that way um, but we will be painting it that way. We are going to load our palette with Mars Black and this is a 12 bright brush smaller one just to give me some more control over some of the edges. If you want to use the three-quarter flat brush you are definitely welcome to use the three-quarter. doesn't really matter. If you want to use a round brush for the edging you can too. So as I'm painting this in solid black don't worry about the brown or the highlights or anything like that right now. It's just going to be solid black. Let's pay attention to that, um, the edge, the negative space. So the edging isn't exactly straight line. It's a little bit wavy. So we want to take that black and kind of create some grooves and waves that still go outside of that line that I drew. So you can see using the tip of the brush to create that shape. It still looks like a heart, but the edges are more natural like what a cave would look like. So you wanna kind of, wanna make sure you establish that first. And then you can go in and everything from that edge of that heart shape to the edge of the canvas is solid 100% black. So as you're painting this in, doesn't really matter the direction that we're going in terms of the strokes. I tend to contour them out so they kind of just go in that direction. And then the bigger areas, I just kind of expressive strokes. I can just flip flop my brush, kind of scribble it in. If you don't want to do it that way, you can just do even horizontal strokes. With this black, it spreads a little bit more easier. If you add just a teeny bit of water in there, you don't want it to be a watercolor consistency. You don't want it dripping down your canvas, but just a tiny bit of water help boost the paint because it's a thick paint. It spreads it easier, fills it up faster. So just go ahead and paint all of that black. The bottom edge of this rocky area is relatively straight. You can make it a little bit wavy, but for the most part it's straight. Don't worry about where the water is hitting it or anything like that. Just make it relatively straight. So when you're done filling that in, you do not need to wait for this to dry to do this step. In fact, it's preferred that it's not dried all the way. I'm loading my palette with burnt sienna. And if there's a lot of black on your brush, you might want to wipe it off or you can just rinse it off completely. But let's start with this burnt sienna and I'm just doing these sort of like rounded circular strokes. And this is just to create color in that cave. So it's not just black silhouette, there's brown and there's going to be some white highlights going on. So as we're painting this in, in like these circular strokes, the black might be blending with it and that's fine. We're just creating areas of that lighter brown color that shows up, but I'm not trying to cover up all the black. 
I'm creating another layer. So this one kind of goes rounded and then it kind of goes angular and blends back all out or disappears out into the dark, the black. So I'm just going to do this kind of all throughout the cave area. Grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush. So I'm dragging it out on my palette, but it should just become kind of a light brown. You don't want it too bright, but just a very, very light brown. I'm just going to take that on the very edge of the cliff, rocky area, whatever we're calling it, cove. You're just kind of outlining it and then just kind of blending it in with the rest. We want the edging to be light in color because that's where the light would be hitting that. And then it becomes very dark and shadowy very fast. So I can take the brush and outline it and then do these like expressive strokes, just kind of blend that color back in with the cave. There's a few spots that are lighter kind of in the darker area, but for the most part, it should be very dark and shadowy closer to the edge of the canvas. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. So very lightly kind of outline the edge of the rock and then use the full width of the brush to kind of drag the rest of that out. Just make sure you're not applying pure white for this, just a very, very light brown. There's a few little kind of ridges into the rock where that light would be hitting it, but very dark and shadowy the rest of the way. So right here, same thing, lighter color on the edge, drag it right back out so it gets dark and shadowy pretty fast. There's a little groove right here with the lighter color and blend it back out. And then right here and blend it back out. So if you need to go back with black to darken some of the areas that may have gotten too light, you can. Just took a little bit more of that burnt sienna, kind of added more color in there. And I'm just going to kind of sparingly add this burnt sienna here and there. Trying not to lose all of that super dark color. But again, we can go back in with more black if we need to. You just want to make sure that the outer parts closest to the edge of the canvas, further away from the edge, should be the darker parts. So when you're done with the cave, you can go ahead and rinse. Let's let this dry. Good time to take a break, come back, or dry your painting and continue. But I want to erase the chalk line here. So any chalk residue that's still showing, you just take your soft baby wipe or soft paper towel and it gently wipes the chalk residue off and we're going to paint the sand next. So for the sand I'm going to make this sand color by mixing burnt sienna with titanium white and I'm going to use the three quarter inch flat brush for this so I'll get this guy all rinsed off set to the side grab my three quarter flat and let's mix white and brown. So about equal parts. So it's gonna turn into kind of a light sand color. And we're just gonna take this, so the rest of this canvas down here is blank white right now. We wanna fill that with sand. Left and right strokes. It's okay if you end up having to paint over some of that water. In fact, it kind of looks nice when that little bit of light brown sort of blends or goes over that blue color. And also as I go to reload the brush, I'm grabbing different amounts of color. So maybe it's a little bit more white on my brush one time or a little bit more burnt sienna on my brush. There's some streaks of color that's not blended all the way. 
I'm going to grab burnt sienna so I can make this part darker on purpose. So I just loaded my brush in just the burnt sienna and where the water is hitting the sand, I want that to be darker to make it look like that sand is wet. So I'm taking that dark brown left and right strokes, painting that on the edge where that water is meeting the shore, bottom parts light. So the outer parts of it, light, part that's closer to the water, dark. So that's gonna create some shadow when we do our soft little sea foam waves in the next step. So let's go ahead and rinse all that off the brush. I'm gonna switch back to the 12 bright brush. You can also use the three quarter flat for this, but the smaller one helps because it's a smaller area that we're painting. So load that in just the titanium white. So we're gonna create this soft sea foam layer. So I'm just using the tip of the brush to create these really kind of loose, rounded strokes of solid white, but leaving, so that part that we painted that's dark brown, I'm letting that still show. I'm not covering that up. Because that's dark brown, it's making that illusion that there's some shadow under those soft sea foam waves. So I'm gonna do this all the way across that where that water it is so that's going to be the edge of that water and when you do rounded strokes it makes it look like it's just kind of gently flowing to the shore do a few little horizontal strokes somehow I grabbed black I don't know where that black magically came from but it's kind of working here if you like that look you can add a little bit of brown to your brush do a little bit of reflection from the cliff in that area I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that off so I can get rid of that black. And actually what I'm going to demonstrate next is how to create some splashing waves against our rocky cliff area. So I'm gonna make sure everything's rinsed off and dry because to do this, we will need to do what's called dry brush stroke. And that means we're only loading our brush with a very, very small amount of white. In fact, if it helps, you can wipe your brush off after loading it. So there's only a small amount of paint on your brush. But we're just gonna take that, kind of drag it up, but quickly let go of the brush, just using the tip of the brush, kind of very lightly. This should be very translucent, not opaque and solid like the sun or the sea foam. It's see-through. So that's making it look like there's little waves kind of splashing upwards. So we can have it kind of angling outwards. And then we can go back and paint soft little sea foam, soft little waves that are kind of hitting the rocks here as well. So kind of the same thing what I just did to the, the shoreline using the paint. So this is opaque. This is not translucent. So there's a lot of paint on the tip of the brush and I'm just tapping it to create little rolls, rolling sea foam waves. I can go back here and add another layer. So at the very top, perhaps that's brighter. A few little horizontal reflection lines and a few more splash lines. So next, I want to do something to the sandy area to make it look like it's more darker on the left and the right sides because of how the cliff would be casting kind of a more shadowy area. So on my palette, I'm gonna mix a dark brown. So get that 12 bright all rinsed off. Let's mix about three parts brown to one part black. And you can gradually in introduce a little bit more black in there if it needs to be darker. So it is a relatively dark color, almost as dark as the dark parts of the cliff. I'm gonna take the brush very, very lightly, add that darker color in on the left and right sides of the shore area, the sand area. Gently 
blend that in. So the center part could be lighter, but the left and right, a little bit darker. And you can see that a lot of that lighter color is still showing through. That's the under layer that we weren't trying to cover all up. We can take that dark, we can add a little bit of dark under our little waves. Make it a little bit darker on the edges, but for the most part, the bottom center area is lighter. If you need to go back with your lighter sand color to help blend that back, you can. We don't need to over blend it. So next, I'm gonna do the sparkles that are in the water. And I'm doing that with the number four round brush. So grab your number four round titanium white. Let's start just by making Kind of these dots that are on the outer parts of the, the horizontal lines that we created earlier. Just a few bright white small dots here and there. And then I'm going to grab my number eight round. So if you don't have this exact brush, it's okay. Just find a brush that has very, very thin tip bristles. So this one has a very fine point to it. And I can take that and I can drag some of these dots up and down to create a little diamond sort of sparkle in the water. So I'm just creating, it's like that's the exact same thing that if you were painting stars in the sky, the little twinkle stars, you just take that center, drag it up and drag it down and drag it left and right. That creates that sparkle. And then we can paint a few more little horizontal white lines kind of all throughout the water area. In this next step that I'm going to show you, I decided I wanted a little bit more pink in my water. You can decide differently if you want, if you don't want more pink in your water, or if you want to add more yellow in your water, perhaps. So I'm going to grab my 12 Bright Brush, freshen up the medium magenta color. And I know this medium magenta is pretty strong, so I'm strong, so I'm only going to load a very small amount of paint on my brush and very, very lightly, left and right, very loose strokes. I'm not going over the part that's in the center. That part needs to stay light and bright, but just over a lot of that blue, but still leaving a lot of that blue showing through. Just the tip of the brush, very loosely, left and right. I can even bring some of this pink down here And next I'm going to do the silhouette palm trees. So there's two silhouette palm trees on the right and I did one on the left. You are definitely welcome to omit that, change that however you want, especially since your cliff shape might be kind of different and I'll show you why. So these palm tree silhouettes are supposed to be behind these kind of a distant island or piece of land way in the distance. They just happen to be popping out through the cliff. Um, but we need to kind of make that trunk pop out somewhere. So you have kind of like an angled area where that one is. Your might, yours might be different. So you can just kind of guess where you want the placement of your tree to be. So the trunk is thicker on the bottom and thinner at the top. And then for each of these palm tree fronds, I do a line in the center and then I do I drag my strokes kind of outwards to create the leaves on each of the palm fronds. And I know I want a second palm tree sticking out somewhere. So I'm just going to take this, create a second one. Again, trunk is thicker on the bottom, slightly thinner towards the top. And then, so he's sticking out at an angle and then each of the lines and then little palm fronds coming outwards from each of the lines.
And then we can do birds. So with the number four round brush, loading that black right there on the tip, kind of twisting the brush because I know I'm gonna do a very, very small set of lines. So just on the tip of the brush, black, two little curved lines. And you can make these different sizes. So those are on the upper left part of the sun. There will be another palm tree in the left somewhere, but I want to get this dolphin placement in next. So what I'm going to do next is get a pencil so that I can draw out my dolphin. So I will be using a black paint pen to fill it in, but I want to draw this with pencil first so I can get the placement right. So he's a little guy way in the distance. He's overlapping part of the sun. So I started with a curve for his back and then his tail. The body is a little bit narrow, closer to the tail, and gets a little bit wider towards the head. We have his little dorsal fin and side fin, and his little nose. So one thing that's helpful for this is to look at silhouettes of dolphins. You can go into Google and type in dolphin silhouette, so it helps you get the shape done. Um, but when you're done with the drawing, I'm gonna use the black paint pen for this. You can use a regular round brush with black paint if you don't have a paint pen. But the nice thing about these paint pens is it allows me more control with these silhouettes. So it's easy to just go ahead and outline the shape first. So there's my dolphin shape. So outline the fin, the dorsal fin, the body shape. And then you can go ahead and fill it in. So I'm just coloring this in solid black. If you do mess up, these paint pens can be painted over. They're just like acrylic paint. And I'll show you in fact what I mean by that. So what it looks like if you paint over it. So the nose, if that's a little thick. You can wait for that to dry and then you can get some blue paint and paint over it. There's his side fin. Next, I'm gonna grab my four round and titanium whites. I'm gonna make little tiny kind of splashes right here, little dots of sparkling water, just kind of going down from the back fin. If you want to highlight your silhouette, I like the highlight silhouettes. It kind of makes it look like they have more form and they're not necessarily flat. But I just did a little white curve on the right side of the dorsal fin and on top of the head and nose. So I'll show you what I mean by how easily this can be painted over. So if you wanted to kind of fix parts of your silhouette, the light blue color easily goes over the black. And you might have to do a couple coats, but for me, that one coat was enough to kind of go over that part of the nose that I wanted to fix. A little more splashes down under the fins. And lastly, I'm going to do one more palm tree over here on the left. We can do two or more if we wanted to, but I'm going to keep it a little bit asymmetrical and just do one over here. So same thing. Thicker trunk at the bottom, thinner at the top. Do your little palm fronds. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Paradise Cove. Hope you enjoyed this painting. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.